the volcanic eruption of Fuego Volcano had many awful effects on many families in Guatemala. Many of the businesses in Antigua have lost from 40 to 60% of their reservations. This has a big impact, not only in Antigua, but all the communities that depend on tourism. Tourism definitely is important for Antigua and tourists shouldn't stop coming. And I think many people come to Guatemala because of the volcanoes, because of nature, because of... It's, it's so imposant, you know, those volcanoes around, around the city. It's, it's something that people really like and are attracted by and many people come and climb volcanoes. Fuego has been active always, not always in the same, I don't know, level, but it's always been active and it's, it's also nice, it's beautiful. And in the end, the volcano had an, a, a very like strong eruption, but the volcano is not the bad guy. It took us by surprise, like, and we're used to having fuego exploding and, uh, and having some earthquakes and I mean, like that, and even like the ashes find out like as a rain and everything, but I think this one was a really, really a tri tragedy for, for, especially for the communities near the volcano. And no one expected that. It was a really, really big explosion. And two weeks ago, it was like a ghost town. Nobody was here. Now there's going to be people on the surrounding losing jobs because there's no business in town and they depend on this city. I think supporting the local community and the local business right now is the most important task for anybody that wants to come and help. So on June 28th, after talking with locals and stakeholders in the tourism industry about how we can help the victims of the Fuego eruption, we decided to do an impromptu overnight hike to the summit of Akatanago Volcano. We specifically chose to hike with a local NGO called Aprode in order to help stimulate the economy and help promote ecotourism in the aftermath of the eruption. A party is made up of a group of volcano guides from the San Jose Calderas community. Many of the guides used to work in the meatpacking industry in the United States, but in 2008 they were captured by immigration police, imprisoned for five months, and deported back to Guatemala. When they returned to their community, they decided to create an income generating community project in order to prevent the cycle from repeating itself. They partnered with tourism institutions that helped train many community members to be tour guides for overnight treks up Acatenango Volcano. Throughout the hike, our guide Juan was a wealth of information about the community and their agricultural practices, the native flora and fauna, and how the surrounding volcanoes impacted all. He told us about how the June 3rd eruption has impacted his community. My name is Juan, and, uh, and I live in San Jose Calderas. Uh, and also, uh, my job is uh, to be a guide in this Acatenango volcano. Before of the uh, volcano erupts, we have a lot of opportunity because a lot of tourists from many countries they like to come to visit this Agatenango volcano. And also we have a field uh, to planting like uh, corn, broccoli, or garbage. Now all the corns we planting in the community, or broccoli, and every plants die because the sent from the from the volcano kills everything and uh, the incomes we have only from Macatenango to be a guide so for this year uh, we are everybody a little scared and sad because we don't know what's what's gonna happen but these guys if you like to come to Macatenango volcano you can come uh, you know if you do that uh, you're gonna help not only me but you're gonna help the the communities around the volcano of Atenango. So peaches and peas, these are the two main uh, commercial products that they can sell in the markets. But unfortunately they're facing a tough situation right now after the eruption. Because all the eruption made uh, the, the crops die or collapse because of the weight of the ash. Some of them produce more corn and they sell it, sell it in the market. However, with the eruption, they're not going to produce enough to feed themselves. They basically are hoping that the corn that survived the eruption will be enough to feed their families. One of the most impressive and heartwarming things about the aftermath of this deadly eruption was how Guatemalans came together to help each other. 
A Prodi Association received building materials, seeds, beds, and other donations from Good Samaritans in Antigua and Guatemala City. Then they got together and rebuilt homes around the San Jose Calderas community. Civil society organizations like World Central Kitchen, along with local and foreign volunteers, also got involved to help make sure that all the displaced families and those who lost their kitchens were being fed. These boxes get delivered direct and unloaded direct to the people, so the food when they're eating it, it's hot. And it's not just, you know, meat and kind of rice dish, it's we send fruit and kind of like so they have, and then we have like yogurts and stuff, so we have a, a little mix of everything that's kind of going to so that people can get good nutritious food. When we heard the news of the Fuego eruption, we were in Belize finishing up the first month of a 70-day backpacking trip. We briefly considered canceling our trip to Antigua, Guatemala, but thought that if we felt that way, many other travelers probably had similar reactions. So we arrived three weeks later looking for ways to help the survivors. We quickly realized from talking to locals that simply visiting, spending tourist dollars, and doing a guided hike up Acatenango was the best way that we could help the surrounding communities and economy recover. So we spent our short week in Antigua at the lovely El Hostel bed and breakfast, taking salsa lessons, exploring the nightlife, indulging in delicious cuisine, making friends with locals, visiting the affected communities, and hiking Acatenango. We left Guatemala feeling overwhelmed with the beauty of the country, the kindness of strangers, and reminded how our simple decisions as tourists can have a large impact on a tourism economy like Antigua. So before you cancel your vacation because of a natural disaster, please consider how that might worsen the desperate situation of the already affected communities. Thank you.